So these are the new Evans Caftone 56 vintage drum heads. They're sexy, they're very musical, but the one thing that I really wanted to let you guys know before you go out and spend your money is that regardless of what it says in the box here, these heads aim for everybody. So these are obviously Evans equivalent to the Remo fiber skin, which you might be familiar with. For this review, I got, um, I got a 14 snare, 12 inch, 16 inch, and I have two on the bass drum. I have the Caftone Resonant and the, um, the EMAD. There's a, there's a Caftone EMAD available. So I spent about a week, almost a week, with these heads, playing them pretty regular. And um, I gotta tell you, man, it's been a lot of fun. These, these heads sound really, really cool. But um, the thing that I really wanted to get across to you guys is that there's a specific application for these. Now I know on the box it says, if you look in the front, it'll say rock and jazz. Um, I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna take this marker and I'm gonna cross that out. Um, these are far too thin ahead, in my opinion, for anything heavier than swing, jazz, bebop, um, light to moderate playing. The construction of these heads are, um, are pretty unique. Um, from the other ones in that they're not really a two-ply. It's more like a single-ply plus a special sort of synthetic film that kind of creates that, um, that sort of caftone look to it. The batter heads for the toms, here's the thing, man. What I was saying about 
how they're really not suited for anything other than uh, light to moderate playing. Here's why. The, uh, the Evans G1 is 10 mil. It's a single 10 mil skin. The calf tones are 7 mil. All right? So these things are really thin. The 7 mil with that sort of fibrous layer um, on top of it. So, I mean, if you're pounding on these things, you're going to destroy them. You're going to destroy them within a few weeks. This is primarily a jazz head. Now, I know it says rock on the box, but uh, I really doubt that that's, um, that that's accurate. Now, I've only had these things for a week, but I've heard plenty of stories of drummers that, for whatever reason, went out and bought these heads, probably just because they look cool, because they do. They look really cool. But these are, these are like hard hitter dudes, like some of these guys are playing gospel and funk and like fusion type jazz and, and stuff like that. And they're smacking on these things with five Bs and two Bs and whatever else. You're completely gonna destroy these things within a couple of weeks and you're not gonna be happy and you're gonna complain to the company and blah, blah, blah. Using these things for anything heavier than moderate to light playing, as far as I'm concerned, is like trying to go off road in a Prius or something. Basically what's gonna happen over time is that that top layer, that top fibrous synthetic film is gonna to start to bubble on you and it's gonna to start to lift, um, you know, when you start playing really heavy on these things. I'm thinking the bass drum heads are gonna be a little bit more durable, but for the toms and for the snare especially, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be far too thin for you to do any type of heavy playing. You gotta remember, these things are sort of designed to emulate the old uh, calfskin heads from back in the day. So, you know, this is pre 10 mics on the kit, pre arena show, you know what I mean? Um, most of those kits were, were being played in small jazz clubs, Kit wasn't mic'd at all. That's, that's the whole purpose behind these heads. So they were not built for durability. So ignore the rock that it says on the box. If you're one of those drummers, don't get these because you're going to be disappointed. That being said, these heads sound beautiful. They're super musical. They're really wide open because they're so thin. And... This is, a, this is a drum head that likes to be tuned up high. I got my 12 and my, my 16 uh, tuned up, not too high, but it's, it's kind of, it's a little bit higher than, than the mid-range because I really wanted to mess around with the whole jazz tuning. I got my snare cranked up. It sounds really nice and tight. Of course, you know, you know, the thinner the head you have on the top, the more... Uh, the brighter it's going to sound. So this is the first 7 mil skin that I've ever actually played. And you get a serious, really cool crack if you're one of those rim shot playing guys. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the snare head is that uh, there's, no, there's no designation between the 14 inch tom and the 14 inch snare. It's the same head that can be used for, um, for either one. If you decide that you really like the sound of this and you'd, you'd like to use it on your, uh, on your snare, I would suggest maybe, you know, just sticking one of these Evans patches on it. Play it for a little bit, see where your stick marks are, and then pop one of these, um, pop one of these patches on it. It'll sort of help to prolong the life of uh, that top film a little bit because it's mainly going to start to bubble where you're smacking it the most, right? So stick one of these um, little bass drum patches on it. It's not going to affect the sound at all if you decide to do that. The other thing I want to mention too is that for brushes, it's, it's, it has a very subtle brush sound. Like it's not an aggressive brush sound at all. Um, it's fairly smooth. So you're not, you don't get a ton of volume with brush work on top of that. So that's, that's another thing that you 
want to keep in mind. If you are going to use brushes, use a thick wire brush, something that's going to provide just a little bit added um, volume for you. But other than that, yeah, um, just keep that in mind. The bass drum skins are all 12 mil skin with that film on it. So um, you have three choices for bass drum. This is regular caftone. Um, it's available in the caftone um, EQ4 and the caftone EMAD, which is what I have on here. And on the front, um, on the front, I just have the, the regular caftone uh, skin. So these two working together. Wow. Um, as soon as I put these things on and, and, and tuned them up, I just decided to hook them up to, to the mics and, and give them a listen. And I was blown away by the amount of tone that you get out of, out of the kick with this particular combination. I have my, my kick tuned up fairly high, or higher than normal anyway, because again, I wanted that sort of jazz tuning. This is a 20 inch bass drum, so I wanted to tune it up a little bit. I have the thin ring on it, just for a little bit of muffling, but the bass drum is empty. There's, there's, there's nothing in it. But uh, yeah, take a listen, man. If you don't have any headphones on at the moment, put your headphones on and listen to this. So they were very generous with the bass drum sizes. You can get these kick heads available from 16 to 26 and everything in between. So regardless of what bass drum size you're playing, you can get a caftone uh, head for it. And I would recommend, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go ahead and spend the money on the batter, get the resonant as well because these two heads together sound like butter so again man keep in mind like these these heads are designed to mimic the vintage heads from back in the day so this was before the days of sticking mics and bass drums and and all that kind of stuff it used to be you just set up a single mic right in front of the kick if it was mic'd at all and uh and there was no hole Cut in it. Now the choice is yours. I mean, if you want to do it, you can do it. But I think it would sort of defeat the purpose of the, uh, the design of this head to go ahead and just cut a hole in it. Like, I don't know why you'd want to do that when there are so many other options available. It is true that they look cool, but my suggestion is that if you're going to put one of those capstone heads in the front, leave it solid. Leave it solid and play this kick wide open because that combination woofs like crazy. And if you put a hole in it, it's, you're just gonna lose, you're gonna lose it. So yeah, man, before you go and, uh, and spend your money on a set of caftones, just be mindful of the application. It's not cheap these days to outfit an entire kit with drum heads. And it would just suck if you went out and spent all this money and then in, you know, within a couple of weeks, you're noticing that your heads are starting to bubble. But if you're a jazz guy, if you're a bebop dude, if you're a, if you're a club jobber, you're gonna love these. These things sound great. Now these two toms, my, my 16 and my, my 12, they're obviously off of my stage custom, which is my regular jobber kit. Um, I'll be changing these before it leaves the house again. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use these as my regular heads. I'm probably, actually I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a set of UV1s, another set of UV1s. I have one on my Phoenix kit. I want a set of UV1s um, for my jobber kit because they're gonna last forever. So that's, um, that's the gist of it, man. Like these, these heads sound really, really cool. 
super musical, tons of tone. You get um, great sustain. They're just not durable compared to the other heads that are available. So if you're a gospel guy, if you're a rock guy, anything, any one of those dudes, stick with getting some of the other ones. Check out the UV1s, try G14 or G12. That's more your speed. That's pretty much everything you need to know about these heads. If there's anything else that you want to know, either go to the website or just leave a comment in the, uh, in the comment section below. Other than that, hey man, if this is the head for you, go out, get them. You're gonna enjoy them. They sound great. <laughs>